Welcome back to another Blender tutorial. I'm Kenan Prophet. In this video, we're going to make grass clumps in Blender. Yes, another grass tutorial. This one, we're going to focus primarily on the procedural shader that will allow you to get pretty close up to this grass. I think you'll find it holds up. You'll be able to create a grass clump asset that you can then instance and modify, and you'll be able to tweak that procedural shader, giving you lots of customizable control over your nature scene. If you want to skip all of this work, I do want to mention you can download my grass pack from my website or through my Patreon. Links will be in the description, so check that out. Right now, let's jump into Blender and make some grass. So I'm going to press A and X to delete everything. And I'm going to press Shift A and add in a plane. Right, I'm going to press RX 90, rotate that plane along 90 degrees. I'll go into edit mode by pressing Tab and I'll press S and X and just make a nice thin grass blade shape press G and Z, move it up along the Z axis. And then I'm just going to kind of drag out these top vertices up here and map out just a simple grass blade shape by scaling this way down. And then I'll add a couple of loop cuts. So one right here near the top, I'll kind of scale this up. One right here in the middle, make a nice simple grass blade shape like that. That looks like grass. Uh, I might add a little bit of variation just sort of scale in a little bit like that. Uh, you want to be careful not to add too much topology. You want to keep your grass probably pretty low poly, especially if you're going to add subdivisions. I'm going to add a control R, a loop cut right in the middle, and we can just kind of bend this a little bit. Bendy, bendy blade detail there. I'll go ahead and right click shade smooth. Now we're not going to deform this into a grass clump just yet. The magic of this whole setup is going to come from the material. So let's create a new material. We'll name it grass blade. All right. And uh, you could go to the shader editor, but what I'm actually going to do is just split this window up here uh, so that I maintain my 3D viewport. And I'll set this panel to my shader editor. Press in, get rid of that sidebar. And I'm going to use a simple HDR from hdrhaven.com. I'll link that, but it's a great resource for uh, free HDR images so that now if I go to rendered view by pressing Z we have some light in our scene and I do want to make sure I'm in cycles all right so there's our grass blade and now we want to set up a really fancy grass shader so that it holds up uh, not just a field of grass but if you wanted to get close up for some reason it would it would still look good so here in our principled BSDF what we can do is take this from this nice white color you see to green um, all right, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> all right, obviously, we're going to do a bit more work than that. We're going to use a wave texture. Shift A, drop in a wave texture node. And if I control shift click and view that, you can see on this wave texture node, we get some nice ridges straight down the middle. But we want to use, we want to make sure we're using the UV map of this grass blade. So let's make sure if we go to the UV editor, you can see there's UVs on this, but it's just, a, it doesn't match the actual blade here. If I do U and project from view, then we can go back to our UV image editor and there we have the UVs that match our actual grass blade. So make sure you have that in place and now we can go back to our 3D viewport and we wanna hook up that UV map as the vector of our wave texture. So I'll drag this out into texture coordinate node, uh, not reflection, we want the UV map. And you can see that totally changes this wave texture. Uh, now we want to kind of scale this up till we get a nice thin line directly in the middle on your grass blade. Somewhere right in there, nice middle line. Uh, that if you look at a blade of grass, there tends to be sort of a dark spot straight down the middle. So that's what we're doing there. All right, so I'm going to put a little distortion in here. I'll go distortion of three, and I'm going to take the detail up, and I'll take the roughness up a good bit as well, almost all the way to one. And now you can see that's starting to look something more like you would see in nature. And uh, we're going to add a little bit more of this. So let me control shift D, duplicate, maintain the connection to our UV editor. And on this one, I'm going to crank the scale up to about 200. So if we control shift click to view the color output of that, you can see a bunch of ridges here on the 200. I'm going to uh, crank the distortion up a good bit. I'll go six on the distortion, but the detail I'm going to take down. I'll cut this uh, kind of in half. Let's go seven. And then the detail scale, we're going to cut this down to 0.5. The roughness I'll actually crank all the way up. Okay, so now we have some ridges, some different lines going 
straight up and down over the whole blade of grass. And we have this sort of thin line in the middle of the grass. So let's mix these two together with a mixed color node. So I'll drop this in, feed these up, and I'm actually going to multiply these together so that you get that sort of leafy grass blade detail working together. This center line I think is a little too pronounced. We're gonna end up mapping this to a color ramp node. So let's get that thin, that line uh, less contrasty. And we can do that with a color ramp node. And I'm gonna just sort of brighten the thin line here so that it's not so pronounced. I might add another tick box in here. It might be too much. You still wanna see it, just not too pronounced. Let's go ahead and map this to a color ramp node. So I'll drop in a color ramp node and instead of just black and white values here, we can pick some green, dark green values here in the middle. And you can see that's going to that dark value right there. And then we can keep going, pick some greenish yellow values, whatever you want your grass blade colors to be. I might add one more here, one more kind of dark green brownish color. This center line is too thick. So I'll slide this color ramp around so that it's more of just sort of a thin line down the center and not so pronounced. Now I wanna add in another noise texture. This is gonna be a Voronoi texture. And I'm gonna use the UV for this as well. And I'll control shift click view that. Instead of F1, I'm gonna use distance to edge. And I'm gonna scale this up pretty high. I'll go 250. And we get these nice cell patterns that you see so often in nature. I'm gonna crank up the detail to about a three. And then I'll crank up the roughness as well, pretty high almost all the way up, but I do wanna check normalize, get more of a clearer mask here. And you see these Voronoi cell patterns in grass and leaves and all over nature. So we're gonna mix in a little bit of this into kind of a yellowish uh, highlight color onto our grass blade. So I'm going to add in a mixed color node, mixed color, and I'll drop in our green grass blade into the top of that mixed color node. And then I'll grab a nice yellowy highlight color here, set this to screen and I can view that. And we want this Voronoi pattern to be the factor of that screen node. So if you view that, you should see some nice cell patterns coming through on our grass blade as well. So that just adds a bit more breakup, a bit more detail. It's looking more like something you would see in nature. So that's sort of our color setup. You can really adjust this however you want. Maybe our center pin stripe is a little too pronounced still. You can kind of dial that back or up or down depending on however thick you want that. But that's just the color and it's looking pretty good. Now, if we feed it into our principal BSDF, we can get it interacting with the light a bit more. You can see that's looking a lot more like nature. Um, but something we wanna add is some light transmission so that the edges of our grass blade, if you look at grass in the real world, the edges are gonna have a lot more light passing through than the center of the grass. So uh, we can utilize right here under transmission, we can utilize this weight value to decide which parts of our grass pass more light through and which parts don't. So let's set up a mask to decide that. We can do that with a gradient texture. And if we control shift click and view this gradient, you can see it's viewing the left. We're getting kind of a black to white value mask here, which is good. But we do wanna use the UVs for this. So let me feed that in to there and we'll have to really squeeze these values with a color ramp node. What we want is just one side of our grass blade, get a nice black and white mask going. And then once that is selected, we can control shift D duplicate that color ramp node and we can try to flip uh, the color ramp and see if we can get the other side. You might have to adjust it a little bit cause it's not gonna flip exactly. So control shift click view one side and the other side. All right, so we've got the left side and the right side masked out pretty well. And we can add these together with just a mix color node and set these, hook these up just like that. And so now we're mixing together these two masks that we can use to sort of determine what parts of our blade get more light passed through and what parts don't. Now we don't want just the edges here. We wanna actually mix in some of this nice detail that we have from this 
from our wave textures up here. So let's go ahead and mix those in as well. Shift D, duplicate that mix node, and we'll just take the factor output of that, and we can just mix in a little bit of that detail like that. You still want it mostly to be just the left and right, but we wanna see a little bit of that breakup as well. So now we essentially just have a nice black and white mask here that we can feed into that weight under our transmission node and hook all this up and hopefully you'll be able to see some light pass through on our blade and get a lot more realistic light pattern coming through. So uh, this is without it. It's hard to tell what it's doing, but we can punch this up with the color ramp node. So uh, let me view that color ramp and we can kind of squeeze these values together, make it more intense. Might take up this black value some so that there's light pass through in the middle. And there you should be able to see more light passing through the edges of our grass blade. And as it gets closer to the center, less light passes through. It just helps add to the overall detail of your setup. Let's add in some roughness as well. So I'm going to uh, grab everything that we did up until this point. So this will include the Voronoi texture with our color. Everything from there, I'm going to feed that into a color ramp. I like these color ramp nodes. And that just converts this to a black and white mask. Clamp those values a bit, and I'll feed that into the roughness factor of that principled BSDF. And you can see that gets some breakup right there. Uh, you're able to see it adjust and interact with the light a little bit more. You know, if we take these white values to black, you're gonna get very glossy, wet looking grass. No roughness almost at all. It's not really what we want, unless you want it to look like it just rained. Uh, so you want these values to be a lot higher. Uh, but you do want some crunchiness so that they interact with the light and the light sort of hits it based off the noise pattern and breaks off it a bit. So not a lot of gloss in grass, at least not for my taste in this scenario, but you want a little bit of that breakup in your color ramp. So it'll be subtle. That's how you can adjust the glossiness and the roughness breakup in your grass blade. And that's looking pretty good. Now we also want to adjust which parts of this grass blade have kind of a darker root down here at the bottom. And we want it to sort of get lighter as it gets to the top. Well, we can do that by up here. So uh, we have our noise textures, we have our color. This is sort of our mask for the transmission. So everything fed into the color, what we can do is just mix this with a mix color node right there and mix the same exact material into this mix color. But one of them, we're gonna drop a hue saturation value node down here. And uh, so if we go all the way to one, we can view uh, this desaturated version. So I'll set this to a value of 0.2 desaturated and I'll uh, also set the value down as well. So it's just dark and desaturated down here. Okay, so uh, turn that factor all the way down, we get our original color, all the way up we get our darkened desaturated version. So let's create a gradient mask that tells us which parts of this grass blade will have the darker desaturated and which parts stay the nice bright green color. So we can do that with a simple gradient texture and drop that in. And I'm gonna drop in, uh, well, we can duplicate the texture coordinate node, Shift D, duplicate that. And I'll feed in the UV map into the gradient texture and view that. And uh, we know that this is going from left to right. If I drop in a color ramp node and kind of squeeze these values, we know that from the mask we created previously. So we need to rotate this. So we can do a vector rotate node and uh, rotate this by 90 degrees. You still might not see anything. What we can do is then raise the center value here up on Y so that we get a nice mask coming in from the bottom like that. And then now we can further adjust this mask nice and clean, just like that. You might set it to B spline as well so that we get a nice faded, a nice simple fade gradient. And now we can take that into the factor of our mix color. You can see the bottom part is desaturated based on this mask here. So now if we hook this up, again, it's subtle. You don't want to do too much, but you want a nice breakup based on sort of the root of your grass blade. If you plan on getting close up to it, you might want to take this same roughness map and you could use this straight into a bump map. Just put it into the height of the roughness map and feed that up into the normal of the bump map. And obviously that's way too much bump, but if you do something like 0.05, you get just a little bit of bump in there. Once you've made any final adjustments you wanna to make to your grass blade, uh, you can of course drop in maybe another hue saturation value node 
And if you want to punch up sort of the greenness of your grass blade, uh, you can do that very quickly and very easily like that. For now, let's go ahead and turn this into a grass clump that we can sort of distort and make into an asset ready for scattering. So I'm going to go into modeling and I'm going to shift D duplicate this grass blade and I'm going to go ahead and hide the original so that I can uh, come back to that if I ever need to. And now what we can do is make adjustments using proportional editing with this. So I like to make sure my object origin is set to the very base of the grass blade. So you can do shift S cursor to world origin and you can grab that object set origin to 3D cursor. So now it'll be at the base of your object and you can scale from there. Then what you can do is turn on proportional editing and change the transform pivot point to that 3D cursor. And now you could go to side view and you could rotate based on kind of the root of the object and you can get some nice interesting grass blade shapes pretty quickly with proportional editing. This will allow you to get some interesting twisting in there as well. Uh, turn off proportional editing while you duplicate. You wanna make sure you vary sort of the thickness the rotation, the twistiness of everything. Obviously, you don't have to always rotate based on the origin. You can do the median point, which is what I like to do, and uh, vary the height, the rotation, the scale, the width. I like to try to avoid the base of all these grass blades kind of sticking together, but you do want them to be very close so that it would kind of work as a clump that you can later scatter together. There's really no rules here. This is just the time to go crazy with proportional editing, duplicating and scaling. You know, once you have a few, you can kind of shift D, duplicate all of them, and then kind of scale them, spread them out so that you have different variations. It's all about variation. You know, nature is very chaotic, very beautiful and chaotic. So don't be afraid to just scale individual elements. Make sure it all looks different. Once you have enough grass blades in there and you feel like that's enough for one single grass clump, what you can do is grab all of them, press Control J, join them together. And then I like to grab this bottom layer of vertices right here and press S, Z, and zero, and kind of make sure they're all scaled together flat. And then with proportional editing enabled, I like to sort of scale the base of them down so that it gets kind of a nice clumped up mess down at the bottom, a sort of a stock situation. And then I'll E to extrude and just extrude down along Z ever so slightly, and that's just to help if you add subdivision to the object. Now everything looks like uh, super sharp, you kind of cut your finger on it, but if we grab that, press Control 2, add subdivision surface to it, right click, shade it smooth, then you know we get a lot more flowy grass in there, something that would be used for scattering. And now the material should be applied as one single object, so if we go to rendered view, you can see we get a nice beautiful grass clump we get the detail working dark to light from bottom to top and the transmission value of letting the light through the edges you can see is way more effective. Uh, we're able to get pretty close up to this and it still works as a texture. We have a little bit of that detail, some of that cell pattern. Uh, you could, you know, put some dew drops on there. And of course, it's fully procedural. So if you want less of these ridges, you want that pinstripe in the middle to be thinner or less prominent. You can, of course, go into the shader and make those changes all on the fly. So it takes some time to set up, but it's really worth it. You're able to have more control over this uh, than if it was just an image texture. You're able to really kind of adjust things a lot by sliding around these different values. But there you go. That's making a grass clump in Blender. And now you can duplicate that, rotate it around, make a whole asset pack. Uh, if you want to skip all this work, I've made a grass clump pack uh, that you can download. If you're a member of my Patreon, you can go and download that. Uh, you can get it from my website. Check out the link in the description. And in my next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take these grass clumps, instance them in a field, and add some wind to it so you get some nice windy grass. So be sure to uh, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, like this video, and check out that next video uh, coming soon about wind in the grass. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Shout out to all you Patreon members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, if you want to download uh, this file or my grass clump pack, uh, you can download that by becoming a member of my Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.